Hello and welcome to the lesson 6.5 video notes over rhombi and squares. And you'll remember uh, possibly that rhombi is the plural of the word rhombus, which is just how they, how they pronounce the, the plural of that word. So if you have more than one, you call it a rhombi. Okay, we're going to talk about rhombi and squares in this lesson, um, but first I want to inform you that this video will not cover the entire section of notes for 6.5. So whatever we don't cover in the video, we will cover in the class. So um, it, I, I'll try and time it out to where I'm not cutting off in the middle of an example, um, but whatever is not finished here will be finished in class. Alright, so first off we take a look at what a rhombus and square are in just a minute, but our objectives here will be to prove and apply these properties of rhombi and squares and determine whether or not parallelograms are rectangles, rhombi, or squares. Okay, so the, let's kind of re, re, uh, review sorry, uh, some of the things we've talked about here. The first two types of special quadrilaterals we learned were parallelograms, and rectangles. And remembering that a rectangle is a kind of parallelogram. The third type of special quadrilateral is a rhombus. And if there's more than one, again, it's called a, they're called rhombi. Okay, a rhombus is a parallelogram with four congruent sides. Okay, if you have a parallelogram where all four sides are the same length, then it is a rhombus. Okay, and we have some very unique um, characteristics or properties of rhombi. First is that if it's a rhombus, it has four congruent sides. That's all you have to write there. Okay, next, if it's a rhombus, the diagonals are perpendicular. There's your symbol for perpendicular. Okay, and then next, if it's a rhombus, the diagonals also bisect a pair of opposite angles. Each diagonal bisect opposite angles. Okay, so in this figure, angle 1 and angle 2 are congruent, and actually 1 and 2 are congruent to 3 and 4 as well. And same thing for 5, 6, 7, and 8. Angle 5 is congruent to angle 6, which is congruent to angle 7 and 8. Now I also want you to remember that um, since a rhombus is a parallelogram, like a rectangle, all the properties of parallelograms also apply to rhombi. Okay, so diagonals not only are perpendicular, but they bisect each other. Okay, opposite angles are still congruent. Opposite sides are congruent and parallel. Okay, so we still have all those characteristics or properties of parallelograms that also apply to rhombi. Okay, so we're going to do some problem solving here and try and figure out some information based on what we are given. Okay, in each of these examples we are given a rhombus. Okay, in part A, we have ABCD that is a rhombus, and we're given this information. We're given an angle measure. Okay, if the measure of angle ABC, so this entire angle measure, is 126 degrees, we're to find the measure of angle CDB. CDB. Okay, now ABC is this entire angle measure. Remember that diagonals of a rhombus bisect these opposite angles. So we're going to think of what half of 126 is. If I take 126 and divide it by 2, because that's what bisect an angle means, cuts it in half, I get 63 degrees. So each of these angles is 63. And you see how I'm marking that in the diagram? That's probably what you want to do. Now, this diagonal bisects the other angle also. Now opposite angles are congruent, so these are both going to be 63 also. Okay? Now, so we're to find the measure of angle CDB. CDB is this angle right here, which is 63 degrees. And they also want CFD. CFD. Now this is a little bit different but I want you to remember what we know about these diagonals. The diagonals bisect the opposite angles, but if you remember, the diagonals 
of a rhombus are also perpendicular. That means that's a right angle where the diagonals cross. Angle CFD is where the angles cross, so we don't even have to do any work. We know the measure of angle CFD is 90 degrees because it's a right angle. If these lines are perpendicular, it has to be 90 degrees. Okay? Part B works out a little bit differently. We're looking at some angle measures and some side lengths or um, diagonal lengths in certain cases. Here, we're going to find TV. That's a length. We want to know what TV equals. And we want the measure of angle VTZ. VTZ. So we want this side and that angle. All right. And so we're going to use the expressions with A for the angle measures. Now, we are not going to say 14A plus 20 equals 5A minus 5. You guys get in a bad habit of just assuming that you set these equal. We are also not going to add them to equal 90 or 180. You have to understand what representation you're given better than that. We're told that this angle is 14A plus 20 degrees. Remember, in a rhombus, the diagonals are perpendicular. So all four of these angles are 90 degrees. That means this equals 90. We didn't even use this yet. We're going to solve this equation to find A first, then plug it in to find the measure of angle VZ, I'm sorry, VTZ, which is the same as the measure of angle XTZ, which is that 5A minus 5. So I have to know what A is first. So that's what I'm going to do first here in that equation. If you subtract 20 from both sides, 14A equals 70. Divide both sides by 14. And A equals 5. And if A is 5, I can plug that in here. 5 times 5 is 25, and if I subtract that, I get 20 degrees. So the measure of angle VTZ is 20 degrees. That's your first answer. Now we need to find B so that we can figure out the length of TV. You may not look at this and realize what to do at first, but remember, in a rhombus, all four sides are congruent. So TV is equal to Tx, or Vw. We'll just call, use Tx this time. So if I can find Tx by plugging a known value in for B here, that's the same as Tv. So I've, I can find out what B is, I just plug it in and evaluate it. So we are going to now use these two equations, or these two expressions to write an equation, because they are also congruent. So here I can say 3b plus 4 equals 13b minus 9. Okay, you guys solve that for b, and then we'll go from there. If you need more time, pause the video. Uh, however, this is what we should get when you're ready. b equals 1. And there's how I solve that equation. So now that we know b equals 1, we plug it in here. 3 times 1 plus 4 is 3 plus 4 which is 12. We don't get a unit of measure, so we just leave it as 12. So TV, TX, XW, and VW all equal 12, since all four sides are the same length. Okay? All right, we are going to save part C to do in class. We'll come back to that one. Um, we will do part C in class. If you want to try it on your own, you want to look at this and try it on your own, you go right ahead. Otherwise, we'll cover that one in class. Okay, now we do have another type of special quadrilateral. Now we've talked about parallelograms, rectangles, rhombi, so now we have our next one. And our fourth type of special quadrilateral is a square, which you guys might think you know all about squares, and you know a lot about them already. Okay, we've got a square given to us here. Now, a square is a quadrilateral, or we can just say parallelogram, it's better that way. It's a parallelogram. with four right angles and four congruent sides. 
Okay, a square is a parallelogram. And because it has four right angles, it's also a rectangle. And because there are four congruent sides, it is a rhombus. Not sure why I capitalized that one, but just ignore that. Therefore, a square has the properties of all of these. So there's no new, unique properties to a square. We're just going to look at the individual properties of parallelogram, rectangle, and rhombus, and then we'll better understand a square. Another thing we can say for squares is that a square is a regular quadrilateral. Okay, you'll remember we talked about regular quadrilaterals have congruent sides and congruent angles. So if it's a quadrilateral, to be considered regular, it must be a square. All right, so that leads us to example two, verifying these different properties of squares. And so we're going to work through example two kind of slowly. This will probably be the last example covered in this video, and the rest of it we'll pick up with in class. Um, but let's talk about using some stuff in the graph here. We are given the vertices of a square, STVW. So the first thing to do is to plot these four points and connect them to show that it's a square. Okay, so we get this, STVW. Okay, if you turn it a little bit, it's a little bit easier to see that it is, in fact, a square. Uh, you can't always go by looks, though, so we're going to look at how these properties tell us that it is a square. We're going to show that the diagonals of a square are congruent perpendicular bisectors of each other. So there's three main things, congruent, perpendicular, bisectors. And here's what these three things tell you. Sorry, it's in view now. If the diagonals are congruent, it's a rectangle. If the diagonals bisect each other, it's a parallelogram. If the diagonals are perpendicular, it's a rhombus. And if it's a rectangle, rhombus, and parallelogram, it has to be a square. So the diagonals tell us everything we need to know to determine which one of these it is. So I'm going to draw the diagonals for you. Okay, I've drawn these diagonals. You need to make sure you do the same. So we're going to follow these three steps. First, we're going to show that SV and TW are congruent. I'm going to check and see if they're congruent because that would make it a rectangle as long as it's also a parallelogram. So I'm going to use the distance formula for ST and VW. I'm sorry, I said the wrong thing. Let's make that SV and TW. We'll use our distance formula using those coordinates. SV for that one, and then down here, T and W. So for SV, we do the difference of the x's squared plus difference of the y's squared. Negative 5 minus 6 is negative 11. Negative 11 squared is 121. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. And so we get that the distance or length of SV is the square root of 122. And we're going to leave it like that for now. Okay, we're going to do the same kind of thing for TW which gives us 0 minus 1 squared, which is negative 1 squared, which is 1, and 2 plus 9, which is 11. 11 squared is also 121, so you see the same two numbers show up. So it does still give us the square root of 122. That means that the diagonals are congruent, so it's a rectangle. All right. Then we're going to check to show that SV and TW are perpendicular, so we're going to look for these slopes. We want opposite reciprocal slopes then. Okay, so when I find the slopes of each one, and now I kind of went through this quickly, I just did rise over run. So from S to V, you go up one, and if you count over, you'll, feel, you'll realize that's over 11. So that's 1 over 11. For TW, we go down 11 to the right 1, which is negative 11 over 1. These are opposite reciprocals of each other, 1 over 11 and negative 11. That means that SV is perpendicular to TW, which makes it a rhombus. Okay, And then we're going to check out to see if they bisect each other using the midpoint formula. And actually, that's where we'll stop the video. We're just about out of time. And so we'll do that step three 
in class.